Okay, so right now I'm recording onto uh, the computer. Okay, so uh, before y'all, uh, we still have a number of students who have not come in yet. Um, what I would like you guys to do right now is to go over to uh, the uh, Da Vinci, uh, blackmagicdesign.com, the uh, da, uh, da Vinci Resolve training website. Okay, this is the link. All right, so I'm just going to send you guys a link again. And I'll just send it to everybody. Okay, please go over to this link and then um, I want you to scroll down. Okay, so when you reach this site, right, it's gonna look it's gonna look like this. So scroll down and go to the last bit that says fusion visual effects with DaVinci Resolve 16. And I want you to download both the PDF and the part one. Okay, part one. So the files are gonna be about four gigabytes in size. Um, I'm assuming most of you uh, already have DaVinci uh, Resolve 16 installed. Okay, if you don't have it installed, uh, please go over here right below and then download the software and install it. Okay, because uh, some of the exercises that we are doing uh, will be found in these uh, in, in the files here. So for those of you who have yet to download, please go and download because uh, there are some exercises that I want you guys to follow uh, for today's session. Okay, so before we jump into the session, let's just go through uh, the notes. Now, all of these notes, right, you can find uh, inside your uh, DEE notes. All right, so we're going to talk about match moving and tracking uh, today. Now, for uh, in order to do uh, to understand how to do match moving, right, just uh, you need to understand like the tools that are available in for this step, and then. Match moving and tracking, right? Uh, this is something that uh, is very, very important in the visual effects industry, because uh, for a lot of uh, okay, for a lot of movies, um, for a lot of movies with they are heavy in visual effects, where you need to composite a lot of uh, CG characters. All right, one of the things that you need to do is to be able to track uh, effectively, and uh, one of the the things, right, that you all learn okay, is camera tracking. Now, camera tracking, right, currently is uh, available in all these software. These, uh, the software that is listed here, these are like the industry industry standard software. Okay, when I was looking at ILM, uh, Xeno is the one that I'm using. Okay, this is actually an in-house software, so it's not available. Uh, uh, it's not available for consumers. Now, if you don't want to spend a single cent and you want to experience what uh, match moving is like, you can uh, go to download and try out Blender 3D, okay, which I'm also quite familiar with. So I do own a copy of Synth Eyes as well. So this is what you're looking at right now. This is a Synth Eyes uh, tracking software. Okay, it's a very uh, it's fairly expensive. I mean for students this is an expensive piece of software but it is very very powerful okay for uh, doing very effective tracking and it is used in a lot of movie productions. Okay the the other well known software like 3D Equalizer, Bujo Track. Now, uh, some compositors also come built in with a uh, map moving component. Uh, among them is Nuke. Okay, Nuke is like the industry standard for uh, compositing. And uh, of course, the software that you guys are going to be learning, Blackmagic Design Fusion, also contains uh, uh, match move, uh, a lot of match move softwares and uh, especially a good camera tracker. Now for After Effects, right, uh, you want to, if you want to do camera tracking, you have to get an additional third-party plugin called the Mocha plugin. So uh, these are the, the, some things that you, you should know about, right? Okay, so um, if you look at trackers, right, uh, most trackers right, have the very similar characteristics. Every time when you try to track something, uh, you have something called a search, a pattern search and a uh, an area search, you notice that there are two uh, different search boxes. The central search box right, will search for the main pattern and then the bigger box is the area which is restricted for this uh, search pattern. Okay, so different softwares will have uh, slightly different looking uh, search boxes. Uh, this one is from Nuke, this one is from Sintai, it's from After Effects and also this one is from Blender. Okay, but essentially they, they uh, do the same thing. So from trackers, right, uh, with trackers, what can you expect to do, all right? So with trackers, right, you can recreate uh, 
okay, you can recreate the motion of the camera or you can uh, attach things to uh, elements that are moving within the plate itself. Now when I say plate, I'm referring to the live video footage that's being shot. So if you want to, let's say you want to attach something to a moving vehicle or you want to change the signboard or you want to change the, you want to attach a signboard next to a moving vehicle, you can do that. You can track the moving vehicle and then you can attach it to that. And broadly speaking, there are also two types of uh, trackers, two types of tracking. Okay, um, I will cat categorize them to like 2D tracking and 3D tracking. Okay, 2D tracking is very straightforward. 2D tracking is basically you have a video, it's all in a flat plane, and you just track something moving on a flat plane. And then you just attach something to it. So that is more like a 2D tracking. Uh, 3D tracking is where you want to recreate the motion or the movement or even uh, recreate a 3D object okay, out from a 2D plate. Okay, so if you don't understand the difference between the two, but uh, as you start to work more on these types, uh, different types of tracking, right, you will start to be able to tell the difference. Okay, so in simple terms, like if you want to attach a signboard or anything like that, that is like a 2D tracking based. If you want to uh, track the motion of a camera, uh, that is 3D, 3D type of tracking. Okay. Okay, so these are the most important things. Okay, so I'm gonna highlight to you all uh, about trackers. So when you are looking for trackers, right, these are the characteristics that you need to find out when you are tracking. It has to be high contrast. That means you you should be able to see the difference between the brightness and darkest areas. Okay, there you can use patterns. Okay, recognizable patterns. Okay, uh, it has to be a constant color. That means uh, over over a period of time, let's say a video footage, right? Uh, the the lighting doesn't change so that the color doesn't change that much. Otherwise, right, you have to do manual tracking. Literally every frame, you have to move the tracker manually manually by yourself. So, um, let's say next time when you guys go out for uh, on set on set production, that means you actually go on set to film uh, to in order to do visual effects. All right, uh, you have to make sure that the the tracker points are visible. Okay, and also. You, it has to be stationary. That means you cannot put a tracker point on a on a banner that that flutters in the wind. Okay, um, and also for tracking camera movement, you need stationary trackers. But if you are tracking characters or you are tracking a person, let's say um, you want to track somebody's mo head movement and you want to replace his head with a CG head, okay, then the person's face must have trackers. Okay, so the trackers must be stuck on the person's face. Uh, very rigidly. Okay, this this is something like uh, in uh, in the production of uh, Warcraft. Okay, the actors have to wear these mocap suits, and the mocap suits have a lot of points on their bodies. Okay, so that is tracking the moving objects. Okay, so match moving and tracking and solving. Uh, we'll go through more of these uh, next week, right? When we are uh, doing actual camera tracking. But uh, the gist of this is that you need to have the, the focal length. If you know the focal length of the camera, and if you know the back plate, okay, the size of the sensor and all that, uh, those information right, are extremely important for uh, getting a good and accurate saw. So if you have all this information ready, right, uh, you, you already uh, give the software a lot of information to help you get a good saw. Okay. And when we talk about error, right, we will try to solve to get an error that is below one. Now, um, I will go through this again when we actually come and do uh, 3D tracking. So meanwhile, uh, just take a look at all this information first. Okay, match moving and tracking. The different types of shots that you will be tracking. Okay, so the easiest type of shot to track okay, are a camera that is fixed on a tripod and the camera just moving up, down, and then left, right. So in the industry, we call this a nodal shot or a tripod shot. Okay, that means literally the camera lens is um, rotating based on its, its node, its central node. Okay, so they, they, generally these are the easiest type of uh, shot to track. Okay, then the next type of shot is, uh, which is uh, more challenging, the, these are the handheld or the free camera. That means the camera is moving, uh, moving in space 
it can be handheld, it can be hold by a person. So it can be a very unsteady camera. So these types of shots, uh, these type of uh, camera shots, right, are much harder to track and uh, a little bit uh, much harder to solve. Okay, so there are a lot of factors that come in. Like for example, if you move the camera too much, and if the the sensor is a CMOS sensor, uh, if you swing your camera too quickly, right, you will end up with uh, with a phenomenon known as uh, rolling shutter. Okay, that means the image will become distorted. When the image becomes distorted, then your tracking, your solving, right, will become much more difficult. All right, so you want to try to avoid that as much as possible. And of course, uh, early on, I was talking about replacing somebody's head with a 3D object. That this is called object tracking. So instead of uh, tracking stationary points, right, for the camera movement, this one is like in reverse. You track an object that is moving. So with the uh, object points that are tracked, right, you can actually recreate the three-dimensional shape of the object, all right? So if you think about it, uh, let's say for uh, for free camera shot, okay? So remember, uh, all, all the while you guys have been doing all this perspective matching, you're only doing it with one, one picture frame, right? You take one picture frame, and then you try to line the, it, it in 3D space until the 3D space matches. But in uh, match moving, right, you are literally tracking or lining up the camera every single every single time as it moves through space. Okay, so that's why it's very important for you guys to understand uh, the relationship of tracking the camera so that you get a good perspective match. So when you are able to understand that, then when it comes to match moving, it becomes a little bit easier. And it also you begin to understand uh, how this match moving works right okay there's another type of uh, shot okay tracking type this is called a change of fov or a zooming shot so again uh, if you don't have the camera information right and uh, or if your software is not uh, that good right you will have a hard time trying to solve uh, the change of uh, fov all right some software right allows you to specify what type of shot all right for example synthize right you, you can say that okay this particular shot, this is not a nodal shot, this is not a free camera shot, this is not object camera shot, but this is a uh, change of FOV shot. If you sort of give the software the hint, right, the software will be able to solve this a little bit better. Okay, so for this particular shot, I basically zoom in the lens and then I tell the software that, okay, this is a FOV shot and then the software will be able to solve accordingly. Right? Now, of course, uh, right now we have a lot of uh, advanced proprietary uh, motion capture system and one of which is the iMocap system developed by ILM and was used in Pirates of the Caribbean. Okay, this, in this uh, example, right, uh, what you have are uh, uh, many different cameramen, at least three at different positions. They take uh, videos of the actors from different angles. Then after that, the footages right, are brought into the 3D software and then the points on the actors are triangulated from these three, uh, they call it witness cameras. And from triangulation, right, you can figure out the 3D spot in 3D space. And with that, right, they can get a very accurate uh, track uh, of the actors. Now, this technology was uh, quite, quite a while ago. I think this one was more than 15 years ago when this movie came out. So right now, uh, this type of uh, technology right, has been superseded by something that is even more advanced. Okay, you know, And now you can literally wear a motion capture suit and you'll be able to get a very accurate uh, tracking data out. And these technologies right now, you can see in movies like uh, the, the sequels to Planet of the Apes. Right? Um, most of the creature, like uh, another one would be... Okay, the last few ones are like um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles uh, and also, of course, Warcraft. Okay, the film that I worked on, right? All right, so this is the end of the slide. So generally, uh, uh, most of the information you're going to get, we have, you can uh, get it out from your notes. Okay, now of course today, we are not going to do all the advanced camera tracking yet. We're just going to do something simpler. Okay, so we are going to jump straight in. Okay, just to verify, um, are you able, okay, let me see. Okay, nobody's replying me. I, you are all able to see all the slides and everything. Huh? The the stream is not too slow or anything like that. Can I have a verification? Okay, good. All right, great. So let's uh, 
continue on. Okay, so before we do something like this, all right, so this is a uh, fusion in, okay, uh, good news right now is that right now I'm working on a system that has uh, the two different versions of fusion uh, installed. Okay, so the, I'm working on a computer that has the DaVinci uh, Resolve installed and also it has fusion installed as well. Okay, so if we have time, right, I'm going to show you the exact same uh, exercise right, that is done using Fusion and also using uh, DaVinci Resolve. Okay, uh, the uh, DaVinci Resolve Fusion version. Okay, so what we're going to start with uh, later on is we're going to have this uh, image of the band. Okay, with tracker points. And then we're going to replace the side of the band with a new logo. Alright, so this is the shot. Okay, so I'm going to basically start everything all over again so that you guys can follow along. But before we do this one, let's do something that is much easier. Okay, so I'm going to just reset everything. Okay, so now I'm back to the original clip itself. Uh, in fact, Let's just start from a clean slate so that there's nothing here. So I'm going to click on new project. I'm not going to save this. I'm going to create this new project called Match Move. Okay, so right now I have a brand new project. There is uh, nothing there. And okay, so you can see everything is clear. There's nothing in the desktop or anything like that. And for the for the uh, fusion version, I'm just going to close it as well. And we're going to start off with something that is much simpler uh, to let you guys understand the concept on tracking first. So I've got a couple of files, right, which I already uploaded to your MS Teams. Okay, I, put, I call it match moving. All right, if you go to over to your MS Teams uh, files folder, if you click on files, you will notice there's a new folder called Match Moving. So it's not very big. It contains a video clip and uh, uh, an image, and then uh, some Note Three uh, examples. So I want you to download this and then put it on your put it aside uh, on the desktop so later you guys can uh, practice and follow along. Now, for those of you who already have uh, the the uh, software installed, you can run the software and then try to follow along if you can. Okay, so right now I started with a brand new project. There is nothing in my media pool. There's no clip at all. So I'm going to bring in fresh clip into my project. All right. So over the media pool, I can just right mouse click and then I can import media. So if all your videos and clips are inside a uh, a folder, right? You can actually import in uh, as a in, import a folder as a bin. Okay, so I'm gonna just click on import media, and then navigate to the folder, the match moving folder, clips, and then I'm just gonna drag and select the two clips, and then open. And uh, now we have two clips. Okay, we have a clip which I shot uh, around the vicinity. And of course, a picture of a famous character. Okay. Then now we are going to go over to the cut stage. And this is where we uh, inspect the footage. You can drag the clip and then put it down into the cut stage. So you can notice there are two timelines in the cut uh, for DaVinci Resolve, which you can preview. Okay, this is a short clip of an art piece at uh, around ITE. Okay, so what we want to do right now is that we want to do a simple four corner pin tracking. Okay, and we just want to explore the tracker. And instead of uh, showing this, we want to replace this uh, LOVE right, with uh, SpongeBob here. All right, so I'm going to switch over to edit and make sure that your playhead, okay, your playhead is over the clip. All right, and then we can click on Fusion. Now notice every time I drag a clip onto the timeline, a new timeline will just appear automatically for us. 
So you just need to know the difference. This is the uh, graphic clip that we tracked in earlier on, and then this one is the video clip. Okay, so we brought this in already. Now we go into Fusion. And you can see the media in and media out. Now to make it a little bit easier to uh, understand, the media in, I'm just going to rename it straight away. I'm going to press F2. And then I'm just going to call this the uh, art wall. Okay. Then next, okay, well, I'm going to bring you, uh, show you how to use the tracker, the tracker node. So how do you bring in the uh, tracker node? Now in the uh, DaVinci Resolve version of uh, Fusion, okay, you can click on the effects library and then you can click on tools to access all the different types of tools here. Alright, so you can look for the camera tracker, let's see, under tracking here, when you click on tracking and then you can see the tracker, the camera tracker here. Now of course, uh, if you do not get the studio version, that means the paid version, right, this camera tracker will not work. Okay, so the one that we want to use is the tracker. So you can click and drag and then you can put it onto the output of this clip and then release. Okay, if nothing happens, all right, that means right we did not release it when the line is blue. So right now, if you try to drag the note over the line, right, it, it will not connect at all. So you can hold down to you can you can click on the input first, click on this input first, then drag the tracker, holding down the shift, and then holding down the shift, and then you drag it until it turns blue, and then release. Okay, so right now the note is connected. Of course, you can also disconnect the input arrows and then connect it to the tracker okay so when you click and create a tracker this on the inspector bar here you will see the different properties of the tracker we have tracker one right now that is created over here so let me just uh, close the effects library tool i'm going to uh, click on this button uh, this button here will just give me more uh, node space here and I'm just going to readjust the size and also I'm going to right mouse click and then just show icons only. Alright, so uh, I want to now position the tracker over to one corner. Now, when you, for the tracker right to work, you must always scrub the timeline to the first frame. Okay, um, for this particular tracker, you do not want to start at the center. All right, you want to start at the first frame and then we want to drag the tracker to the uh, correct position. Let me just zoom in a bit. Now to zoom in, you must hold down to the control key and then the middle mouse roller to go in to zoom in. Now to pan, middle mouse click and drag okay, until you see the tracker. Now I'm not sure whether you can see it, but there are two boxes you see here for the tracker. The, the area of interest the box, area of interest box here and then the search area okay so these two boxes define uh, two different things now if you want to move the tracker to the point that you want to track you have to click on the corner here and drag this then i want to zoom out so hold down the control and uh, roll your middle mouse down okay and then okay i'm not sure why my this uh, Okay, OSD hotkey, let me see what I can put in front again. For some reason, the OSD hotkey doesn't want to appear in front. Okay, never mind. I'll just explain the, the shortcut keys that I'm pressing when I'm uh, doing things step by step. Alright, so to move this tracker, you have to click on this corner dot here. Move your cursor until you see this dot is highlighted. Left mouse click. When you left mouse click, you can drag it and you can see that it also increases the magnification. So now I'm going to look for the corner of this drawing here. And you can resize by moving over to the opposite ends of the box, clicking on the corner, and then you can resize it. Okay, I'm going to change the size of the tracker until it, I'm restricting the search area only to this box. Now you do not want to make the, uh, the area of interest too small. Otherwise, when uh, the tracker is moving right, the tracker box might move out. All right, so make sure that the uh, tracker box is sufficiently large so that you can see enough high contrast detail. 
Okay, so over at our inspector, our tracker one is placed in the correct position. And we can actually start to track by clicking on this button. But uh, we can actually track multiple points at the same time. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create a second tracker. So go ahead and then click on this button and create a second tracker. Now when you add another tracker, sometimes the tracker will just appear randomly elsewhere. So you can find the tracker. If you cannot find it, you just need to zoom out and then there it is. This is the tracker. So I want to move the tracker until it is tracking this corner. So click on a the corner, then move it, drag it until click and drag until it touches this corner here. I'm going to zoom in again, go down to the control, middle mouse roller, uh, push up. And then I'm going to resize this tracker box and the search area until it is at this corner. I'm going to repeat the same step for the four uh, tracker points. Okay, so holding down the control, the middle mouse roller to roll down to zoom up. Then left mouse click and drag this tracker until it reaches the corner. So remember to zoom in and zoom out holding down the control, middle mouse roller in and out. Okay, so adjust your tracker box until it is tracking at the correct location. I'm going to add the fourth tracker. So just go ahead and add tracker number four. I'm going to zoom out, drag it into place. Okay, adjust the search area box. So right now make sure you are in frame one. Okay, and then we are ready to track. We're going to leave everything at the default settings. And if you look at all the properties here, if you click on every individual uh, tracker points, you can see other properties that you can adjust. Okay, for those of you who are in the know and you want to adjust more advanced settings. Okay, uh, right now I believe the uh, it is tracking based on luminance. You can uh, tell the tracker to track it based on certain color channels as well. You right now it's uh, tracking based on luminance. That means the brightness and contrast level. You can also click on this color to tell the tracker uh, node to track the patterns in color. So that means you will look for color patterns and then you will search color. But I think for this example, the luminance, that means the brightness contrast is good enough. So I'm going to leave it at that. And now we are ready to track. So all these buttons are quite uh, easy to understand. This is to stop the track. This is to track one frame at a time. This one is to track all the way to the end. Okay, so I'm going to just click track forward. And right now you can see the tracker is going all the way from frame zero all the way to the end. Okay. Now traditionally, I would not recommend uh, tracking uh, MPEG-4 video because this is an MPEG-4 video that I shot on my mobile phone. Okay, so in the normal practice, in a professional setting, right, um, what we will do is that uh, whatever footage that we film, we actually convert them into an image sequence first. Okay, once you convert them into an image sequence, then you bring them in, and then that is what we track. Okay, so but for this example, just to keep everything simple and easy, we can just track this straight away. Okay, so now now that we track, if you want to double confirm the track, okay, you can track it backwards again. We can track the reverse again from the last frame, and then we can track it back in reverse just to get a good solid track. So this is almost like uh, just to verify that the, the first track is good. Now, um, this particular shot is not exactly very challenging okay? because uh, I took care to make sure that all the details are visible so that I know that this kind of track will be very easy to track. Okay, so now, now that we tracked this shot already, so let's go and explore what we can do with it. Okay, so let's go over to the second option of uh, the uh, the tracker. So once you track the uh, the shot, you must click on the tracker node so that you can see the uh, properties. And you want to go over to the second option here, the second tab here. Okay, we call these tabs. And the operation currently is set to none. The default is none. That means, yeah, we have tracked, but there's nothing's going to happen. So what are you going to use the information for? So let's click on the, uh, the drop down and you can see that there is match move, there is uh, corner positioning and then there's perspective positioning. 
Okay, we're gonna try a uh, match move first. Okay, when you click on match move, and then uh, there is this foreground over background, so uh, we're just gonna leave it at that first. And if you click on playback, okay, nothing seems to have happened because right now we are looking at media out. Okay, let me just zoom out a little bit. Okay, so nothing seems to happen. So let's say if I click on uh, foreground only. And let's just play back and see. You can see that if it ch changes red, that means it is nothing's happening because there's no foreground that's plugging in. So remember the sequence of background, yellow, and foreground. So that's why it changes red. Okay, let's say background only. And then this time, I just hit play back again. There is a background, so now we are tracking the background. And you notice something very interesting is happening to the shot. Okay, and you can see all these checker patterns suddenly appearing. So what, what does this all mean? Um, what we are actually doing right now is that we are stabilizing the shot. And by stabilizing it, right, we can see that the position of this shot is being stabilized, the rotation is being stabilized, the scaling is also being stabilized. So uh, what happens is that the scale of this thing is constant. You can see that even though I'm actually walking forward when I took this shot, the scale is actually being affected. So I'm going to stop this, go back again, and this time I'm going to uncheck scaling, and then let's see what happens. Okay, this time you can see that the this wall, okay, this art wall is becoming bigger and bigger because I actually walked slightly closer to it when I filmed this. Okay, so let's say if you are doing a stabilizing shot, you want to stabilize the shot. Um, now, if if you are just going to stabilize the shapes, right, uh, one track point is actually good enough. But if you want to stabilize like rotation, that means the camera rotating like this, then you need about two track points. But if you're, and also if you want to lock the scale, then you need minimum three track points. So this is uh, something that you all need to be aware of. Okay, so you notice that I have uh, disabled scaling so that you can see the shot is getting bigger. But what about this uh, this transparency area? So if I were to go out to the media out and we go to the the edit right, and then you notice that there's a lot of black space around here, okay, along the final shot. So if I go back to uh, fusion again, so how do I avoid seeing this transparent area? Well, you can add a transform node okay, after after the tracker. Okay, so I'm going to click a transform node after the tracker, and then in the transform node, I can change the the size, and then I can also animate the center of the video until it fills up the frame, so that I don't see any of that uh, transparent area. Okay, so let's go to the First shot, this one looks fine. And you can scroll forward and then make sure that you don't see any of the transparent areas appear. So this is, now you can see the shot is very stabilized, very smooth right now. Okay, so we have that transform being added in. Okay, so if you have a very sick, shaky shot, Okay, you can use this uh, uh, this tracker to help you stabilize it. So that's one use for the tracker. All right. So now let's say I want to add uh, SpongeBob onto this uh, shot. Okay. So uh, how should I do that? So first, I need to bring in SpongeBob. So let's click on the media pool and let's drag him in into this shot. And then I'm going to rename this. Press F2. And I'm going to call it Sponge. Okay, and then for SpongeBob, I want to put him as the foreground. Okay, remember the rule of compositing in uh, the merge node. Okay, right now the tracker is also acting something like a merge node, so it's uh, it's stabilizing this shot uh, as a background. And then if you want to stick something on top, you have to click on the output of the image and then drag it into the foreground. So right now. If I look through the uh, result, I don't see SpongeBob, okay, because 
uh, the tracker doesn't know how to do uh, what to do with this. All right, so we have to go to the tracker, and this time our operation is match pool, and it was he is only using the uh, background only. So that's why if we change it to if I put the foreground over background. Okay, so now you can see that I have SpongeBob over the shot itself. Okay, but SpongeBob right now is too big, right? So we need to scale him down. So you can select this shot, click on the transform node, and then we can select the transform node and scale him down. Okay, and then we're just gonna hit play. And you'll see that the SpongeBob is stuck pretty much in the center of this uh, clip here. But this is not what we want, right? We want to actually replace this art piece so that the four corners are actually connected. Okay, so you can easily fix that by going over to the tracker operation. So click on the tracker node. So instead of match move, we are going to change it to corner positioning. All right, so corner positioning, and then I'm going to get rid of the uh, transform transform node and then I'm going to check um, background only okay let's see corner positioning You can see now the corners are to be there, but let's see what's wrong. I can't seem to be able to see the shot out. Okay, I will have to go and refer back to my Okay, I'm going over to the previous setup that I did. Okay, sometimes I'm also not sure which are the nodes that has to be connected properly. So let me just go back to look for the proper connection. This one. So corner pin. Okay, the operation should be corner positioning foreground over background. Yeah, it's correct. So foreground over background. Foreground over background. And okay, I can actually see a little bit of it over there. Okay, I tell you what, I'm going to redo this again. Get rid of the transform. Okay, it seems that. Okay, let me try to flip this. Okay, right now it seems to be hiding over this section area here. Okay, I tell you what, I'm just going to run the whole thing again. Okay, well, you can treat it as a practice. Okay, I'm going to start from the art wall. I'm going to create the tracker again. Now, you can, besides taking out the tracker from the effects library you can also bring it out very quickly by using the select tool by holding down shift spacebar or control spacebar okay and then i'm going to add a tracker you can click um, you can click on this uh, input node first and then create a tracker and then it'll be connected auto automatically or like what i showed you earlier holding down to make sure you click on this node first holding down the shift key left mouse click and then hover over the tracker and then release okay and then i'm going to do it one more time i'm just going to track this very quickly okay and then add another tracker point Okay, remember to click on the corner with the box. Find the fourth one. So 
the more you practice, I think uh, the more familiar that you will get. Okay, so let's track forward. So I think uh, what happens uh, just now was um, when I try to switch between the uh, motion tracking and corner pin, uh, something went wrong. Okay, so this time I'm going to go over to operation and straight away go over to corner positioning. Alright, then foreground over background. So I need to connect the foreground and then there you go. Alright, so I think that was a bug earlier on just now uh, when I tried to search, uh, switch between the different operations of the tracker. Okay, so right now it works and I click on the media out and if you press number two, okay, remember there are two viewports here. If you press number two, you are viewing, uh, viewing the output of this node at viewer number two. And if you want to see the original uh, footage, you press one to show the original footage. Okay, so now I can play back and you can see that the, the image has been replaced with a smudge bar. Okay, so you can try this out yourself and uh, I think it's, it's quite simple. You can see this is just a few notes and if you go over to the edit of your uh, of your clip, right? Then, if you're happy with this, you can start to export it out. Now, I want uh, you guys to challenge yourself. You have your mobile phone with you, all right? So, if you have a picture or you have a four corner image, right, that you can actually uh, film and then bring inside uh, Resolve, you can also do the same thing. Okay, so that is simple. Uh, so I'll consider this type of tracking as 2D, 2D type of tracking, okay? Alright, so now, are you guys ready, right, to go over to do something much more complicated? Alright, now, uh, maybe before I do that, uh, because you guys will be coming into school to use the uh, Fusion, uh, now the good thing about the two labs here right now is that I believe uh, all of them are installed with two versions, okay? I've checked one of the computers, in the lab, so you can use either the DaVinci Resolve uh, Fusion or you can use the standalone Fusion. Uh, I'm going to quickly show you how I do exact the do the exact same thing using Fusion. So I'm going to open up Fusion, but you notice that uh, in Fusion, right? This is Fusion, and when you open up a comp, right? There is no editor, there is no media pool, again, okay, nothing like that. So you have to bring in the image right using something else called the loader so i'm going to start a new composition okay so we have nothing there is no uh because this is the standalone version of fusion so i'm going to bring in the same clips so i'm going to click on the button over here that says loader and then i'm going to navigate to the uh, folder that contains my files So you have to bring in the file uh, one by one. So I'm gonna bring in the video first, and then I'm gonna bring in SpongeBob. And I do not want them to merge together. Now you're gonna get rid of a note very quickly. The shortcut is backspace, or uh, just delete. All right. Then I'm gonna rename this properly. I'm gonna call it SpongeBob. And then the video is the video. All right. So Okay, so same thing, you select the video plate, you want to track it, so with the video plate selected, shift space bar, then type TRA, tracker, and add a tracker. So we want to see what is inside the tracker, so you just press number 2, so that you can view it on number 2. Now to zoom to fit, you press, uh, click on the viewport first, you must click first, then control F. Now if you just want to see one viewport, you can click on this button, so that we just look on one viewport. Then we'll do the same tracking again. So we already have one tracker here, just position it one here, resize it. 
uh, tracker this one I'm gonna do this as quickly as okay you see I made a mistake um, no uh, I thought I made a mistake okay make sure that you are at frame zero when you're adding your trackers and uh, before you start your tracking very very important okay add another tracker and the final tracker so this one should be quite fast so I've done this three times already so you should be quite familiar with it now. okay so the uh, length of this video clip is 194 frames and the default uh, fusion comp when you start fusion is 1000 frames so I'm going to reduce this to 194 and uh, we can start to track so you can see basically the same thing put spongebob on top here just wait for the tracking to finish so our tracking is done all right so once it's done we are going to the tracker operator click on the uh, operation tab then change it to uh, corner positioning and it has to be merge foreground over background the foreground in this case is not connected yet so we're going to connect the foreground over the background and we get the exact same result Okay, once it's loaded into the memory, it should play, play quite fast. Okay, so this is how you do it in the uh, Fusion. And then once you're ready to output it, you create a saver. Okay, and you give it the name that you want to save it to. Save it as a MOV. Quick time MOV. There you go. And then save. Uh, okay, we should not be connecting to this. Okay, if you want to disconnect this, this is actually the output, right? It's now connected between here, which is wrong. If you want to disconnect this, you can hold down the shift key and then just drag it out. Alright, so output format. I want to say there's a quick time movie. Yeah. H264. Then output, connect, and then, then when you hit render, this over here then you render out as a movie so this is the difference in using fusion studio okay, so hopefully you guys can uh, know the difference okay, so the the best opportunity for you guys to try is when you guys come back to school and then uh, use this this setup okay so this is how you do a simple uh, track and then output okay so let's go to look at the more complicated project so I'm gonna start a let's go to the project manager here now I'm jumping back to the resolve now click on the uh, project manager now uh, yesterday uh, Figo was asking how do I bring in uh, how do I restore in the project that I've downloaded from the DaVinci training website so when you downloaded this file and then we unzipped it okay I'm going to show you what it looks like Okay, so this, these are the training files that are downloaded. So the zip file is about 4 gigs in size. Then after I unzipped it, so these are the different uh, project files. Um, the, as long as the folder contains a .dra, .dra and so on, you can actually bring it in uh, to restore the project. Okay, for example, let's say I want to bring in the quick start DRA. If you go over to the resolve version, the project manager, you can right mouse click anywhere on this empty area and you click on restore project archive then you click on let's say anything that has a DRA next to it for the folder and you click open and you have to wait for a short while and then all the projects all the bins all the timelines and clips right are organized into this folder okay so this will make accessing the files a little bit much easier However, if you don't have a project organized, then you have to do what I did earlier on. I created a new project and then I bring in the clips one by one. Okay, so the for the next exercise that I want you guys to try out is inside Fusion 16 lesson part two. So uh, simply I just right mouse click restore the project archive and I go to the part two. All right. So uh, I'm skipping part one for now because uh, I think most of the stuff inside part one is quite uh, quite.
quite basic, which you guys can try out as well. Now the more difficult ones is the uh, the tracking portion, which I really want you guys to master. So let's go into the Fusion 16 Part 2 and double click on it. And I'm going to save the match move. So we have loaded up the project. Okay, so this is what you will see okay, on the timeline. Okay, so everything has been uh, loaded nicely for you. So if you uh, drag and click, right, this will be like lesson number five, lesson number six, okay, lesson number practice, lesson number six. And the lesson that we want to try out is lesson number seven. Okay, so for this one, this one will get a little bit complicated and I will try to explain every single step along the way. So if you are not sure, you can just pause the video, rewind, and watch it again. Now, if you want to do this step by step, if for those of you who prefer to read, okay, you can open up the document. It's inside here, the PDF, which you can download from the link which I've just shown you earlier, and you can follow the step step by step okay so so this is the one lesson number seven replacing the science and screen so you can go through this step by step and you can achieve the same thing which i'm going to demonstrate to you now so i'm going to start off by dragging the play hit over the band track clip and then i'm going to click on fusion okay so now the media out is showing on uh, viewer number two. So you can see that this is the clip. So let's review the clip first. Okay, I'm right now just clicking on uh, to show the single window and then I'm going to hit play. Okay, this clip has been edited until it's about 110 frames, 111 frames, okay, 110 frames in length. Okay, so what is uh what do we plan to do? We want to track these uh this area here, the side panel of this uh, band, and then we're going to replace it with a, a different logo. Okay, it can be anything. So you can think of this application uh for this type of effect. Like for example, you want to change the uh, change the license plate of a car. All right. So or you want to um yeah, basically you want to put an, another image. Uh, and stick to, to this. So you're going to use a, uh, another type of tracker called a planar tracker. Now what does planar stand for? Planar means you want to track something that is flat, a flat and even surface. So in this case, the flat and even surface is referring to this, uh, the side of the truck here. Okay. So right now what we, uh, I'm going to explain the step to you first. Okay. First, we are going to identify a frame where we can see the side very, very clearly. Okay, so according to this uh, tutorial, right, the best frame is frame number 65. Okay, so we are we are going to isolate this frame and then we're going to track this frame. Okay, so I'm going to rename my media input. I'm going to call it the family. Okay, okay. Next, I want to create a planar tracker node so that I can define the area that I want to track. So go ahead with the, uh, the band uh, movie clip selected. Then you can press Control Space Bar, and then type P L A, and then P T R A. So if you look at the brackets here, these are actually the shortcuts, right, for getting to these uh, notes very quickly. For example, if I want a planar tracker very quickly, I just type P T R A. Okay, see P T R A. Boom everything is shown for you. Then we click on add. And the planar tracker will now be added. Okay, now when you click on the planar tracker node, you notice on the viewer port, a bunch of new tools right, will appear. All right. So these are uh, spline tools, or uh, they call it uh, the polygon tools that allows you to draw a polygon shape over the area that we want to track. So in this case, in this case we want to track this area. So the by default, we are in polygon drawing mode already. You can see the pen drive uh, is active. 
So the next thing you want to do is to start to draw over the area that you want to track. So I'm going to start from this corner here. And I want to show you, well, I want to show you quickly how this works. So if I click and uh, very quickly, right, you will create a sharp line. So if I click and drag, click and drag, you will start to create a curved line. All right. So if you make a mistake, you can press Control Z to undo. All right. And then you're just going to continue to draw a mask over this area to define the selection. So I'm going to start from here, click here, click here. Here. Now, you want to try to avoid to track uh, things right that change. Okay, so you want to track an area right that always remain the same that doesn't change much. And finally, to close it up, you have to move the cursor over to the final point until it changes into this cursor showing a circle left mouse click and then now we've closed so now we have defined the area and we've also studied the click and we we determined that frame 65 is the best frame for doing our track so go over to the planar tracker in the operation we are now set to track okay and then we can if you look at the operation you can see there are many different types of operations that you can try but today we're just going to try tracking and we are going to set the reference frame that means the the key frame that all the tracks is going to start from so we're going to start from frame 65 and hit set so once this is set we are ready to start to track all right we're going to leave all these uh, instances with all these values right these drop down as default so don't don't touch all these Okay, you can start by clicking on this, all these buttons. Now, what, what does all these buttons stand for? This one is to stop track, track for one frame. Okay, delete, delete tracks after this uh, particular frame. And uh, this one shows the splines in the spline editor. Okay, so you can just hover to see what uh, these buttons, uh, the two tips will tell you like what, what these buttons stand for. So right now I want to track to the end. So I'm going to click on this button. Okay, so you can see it tracked all the way, but uh, and then it stopped here because this is where the animation ends. Okay, then I'm gonna click on go to go back to the frame, and then this time I'm gonna track the opposite direction. That means track in reverse. So click track, and then it's gonna reverse until it stops. And on your timeline ruler, you should see all these white frames or white uh, stripes on your time on your ru time ruler. So that shows that there are key frames that are already added. Okay, so now we have our frames track. Okay, so I'm happy with this track. So let's put this aside. Okay, we will come back to this tracker again. So now what we want to do is we need to get rid of this these tracker crosses. Okay, these marker crosses. So these marker crosses, right, uh, will have to be cleaned away. So now we have to use a uh, Basically, we have to freeze this particular frame, frame 65. We have to freeze this frame in time so that we can use this particular frame, right, to create a blank canvas or blank uh, space where we can put our logo. So go and create a time time stretcher node. Okay, the time stretcher node will freeze this frame for us to paint on. So the time stretcher node is if you uh, type control spacebar or shift spacebar just type the acronym time tst okay so the time stretcher is tst so if you type tst you got a time stretcher so we can click on the time stretcher and then add the time stretcher uh, put it on one side first now remember what i mentioned about for a source node that means a media node you can have as many outputs as you uh, can so I'm going to draw, drag an output and connect it to the time stretcher. Okay, and right now I'm at frame 65. And if you click on the time stretcher, go over to your time uh, inspector, and the source time we're going to lock it at 65. Just type 65. Now make sure if you are in fusion, right? This this uh, red dot might not be on because I'm in the uh, resolve version. 
this red dot is on. Okay, so make sure that the keyframe button is activated. All right, so this is important. So make sure it's not gray out. So if it's grayed out, just click on it so that it's red. So right now, if I click on sign stretcher, if I press 2 to show in the viewer, if I drag the timeline, you notice that the animation or the movie doesn't play anymore because the time stretcher has effectively frozen this clip for me for this particular frame. So right now I can drag the uh, play hit all the way to frame 0. Okay, and then the next node I want to create is to create a paint node to clear out all this area. So go ahead and create a paint node. So you can uh, press control space bar again and then type paint, P-A-I-N-T. Uh, shortcut is PNT and then add a paint node. Okay, add a paint node just after the time stretcher. So the paint node is a very powerful and versatile uh, node. Now when you click on the node, you notice that the top of the viewport right, will show you the different tools available for uh, each of the particular nodes. So in this case, right, we want to paint out all these uh, these crosses or these markers. All right. So uh, if you click, if you hover over these, there's a select, then there's this multi-stroke, there's this clone multi-stroke, and then there's a stroke. Okay, so you can use any of these. Okay, however, if you use the multi-stroke or the clone multi-stroke, right, it will only paint for one frame. That means later if you play back the animation, right, the crosses will still appear on other frames. So you want to use the paint tool that allows you to uh, automatically paint over the crosses across all the frames. So the tool that I'm going to use is the paint, the stroke tool. All right. Now if you click on uh, if you click on each of these different tools, right, you notice on the inspector it shows different properties as well. But for example, when I click on multi-stroke, it shows multi-stroke. When I click on clone multi-stroke, it shows clone multi-stroke and so on. Okay, so the tool that we want to use is the stroke tool, the paint stroke tool. And if you click on the stroke control, the stroke animation is actually saying all frame. That means whatever they're painted on will be repeated across all the frames. That's why we need to use this one, the third tool here. All right, so now how do we actually get rid of the crosses? And which tool should we use? Then we have to go over to the apply mode. All right, so there is this a fill, there's a color, there's a clone, and actually we need to use clone. Now next time if you're working on uh, visual effects where a stuntman where is being suspended by wires, they even have this wire remover too, which is a smart wire remover. So you can play with that if you have some footage. Okay, but uh, for this exercise, we're going to play with the clone tool. So click on clone, make sure in the clone tool. So move your cursor back to the viewer and you will notice that you have this circle and X. So how do you use a clone tool? Okay, so first I'm going to zoom in closer, holding down the control and middle mouse roller roll up. Okay, and middle mouse click and drag to pan. Now, if I want to sample this area, okay, for Mac is the uh, option, but for uh, PC you have to hold down to Alt key left mouse click to establish the reference area and release okay then move your cursor over to the point that you want to paint out left mouse click and drag to start to paint out now notice that hey how come nothing is happening okay i make this mistake many times okay that is because we are now we are not looking at what uh, we're not looking at the paint node we are looking at the time stretcher node so this is very important you have to make sure that the uh, Viewer 2 is activated, so I'm going to click on it, and now I can see the cross is gone. Okay, so again, if you want to reference, let's say I want to reference this area, holding down to the Alt key, for Macintosh is the com Command key, left mouse click to sample this area, and left mouse click to paint over the area. So it's basically uh, sampling this area, cloning it over to the cross. So go ahead and Middle mouse click and drag to pan, and we're going to paint over every every cross. So Alt sample this area, and then paint. Alt sample this area, paint. Alt sample this area, paint. Okay, you don't have to sample it all the time. If the offset is good enough, you can just 
simply just paint it off. Okay, some of you might be wondering why do we need so many trackers? Well, the extra trackers is just make it easier for the planar tracker to track. So if you don't have any trackers stuck onto the uh, the vehicle, right, uh, it'll be very very difficult, right, to track uh, it as it moves across. So right now I finished painting over, and we have a clean slate. That means we have a clean canvas, and we can start to bring in an image that we can stick on the side of the truck or the van, right? So we are going to show you how to bring in uh, images like a Photoshop file. Now to bring in a Photoshop file, we're going to go over to click on Fusion and then import. Now in Fusion itself, if you're using Fusion, it's file import, okay? But over here in the DaVinci Resolve, you have to click on Fusion, import, and then click on PSD, which means Photoshop files. And we're going to navigate to the folder in Fusion 16 Lessons Part 2, Media Files, and click on e at Joe PSD. Now, when you click on Open, you will notice that there are a bunch of notes that are brought in okay and sometimes it might be uh, covering over the uh, note tree that you've just built okay so I'm gonna move the notes out of the way and I'm gonna show you uh, what it looks like okay so let me, do that. let me just click on two paint views again and let's take a look at this uh, Photoshop file I'm gonna press one and you can see that this Photoshop file contains two different images. It contains a logo and it also contains the address. Now for this exercise, we only need to use the logo. The normal is actually uh, almost like a merge node that is combining these two together. So if I were to delete away the normal, which you can do by pressing backspace. Okay, right now we have the logo that is isolated and if you click on the address, you can see that it is isolated as well. So we don't need this uh, address layer, so you can press backspace to delete it away. So if we click on logo and press 1, so this is the logo. We want to put the logo on top of this new uh, painted, just a freshly painted uh, area. Okay, so drag the logo over and basically we want to put the logo on top of this painted layer. So remember if you want this to be on the foreground, you drag the output, okay, drag the output which is this square box here, drag the output and put it on the output of the paint node and a merge node will appear for you. Okay, but if you say, hey, where's, where's the logo? I expect the logo to be sitting on top. Okay, so this, you're going to see the logo, you have to click on this brand new merge node and you press number two and there you can see the logo appearing on uh, the vehicle. Okay, so next we want to adjust the okay, the transparency or we want to uh, adjust the merge properties, uh, the apply properties of this image so they appears to be on the vehicle itself. So click on the merge node, go over to the inspector, look at the apply mode and I want you to go and change it to soft light. Okay, right now it has become very, very light. Okay, so we want to apply a brightness and contrast. So click on the logo node, click on the logo node, and then go and drag a brightness and contrast node. Okay, until it, this blue line uh, appears and release. Okay, go over to the brightness and contrast node and reduce the lift until it's about 0 0.8. So just to bring back some of the, the density of the colors. Now, if you look closely, I'm going to zoom in, holding down the control, middle mouse roller up. You notice that the edges of the logo is very jagged. Okay, so how do we fix that? Okay, so we have to apply something called pre-multiplication. Alright, so basically, uh, is to basically clean up the edges of the alpha channel, the transparency channel. Now, to do that, you can actually see over here called the pre-divide and the post-multiply in the brightness contrast node. Now in a lot of color correction nodes or any uh, nodes right that affect the transparency, 
there are there is this button here. So when you click on this button, just look at the jagged edges. When you, I click on this button, you can see that it completely smooths it out. All right. So this pre-divide post multiply is very very useful. So use that to smooth out your transparency edges. Okay. So next, what we want to do is we want to reposition or at least distort this logo until it fits the side of this uh, fan uh, much better. So let's go and find a node to do that. Okay, so the node that we want to uh, do is a, a corner corner pin. Okay, so select the brightness contrast node, press control spacebar or shift spacebar, you can type corner, corner positioner. Right, so this is the corner positioner that you want to use. The shortcut is CPN. And then we're going to click on add. Okay, so when I add a corner positioner, you can see that there are there's a red box, and you can even have control so you can specify the position of the red box. All right. So if I were to grab these points and I have bring them to the edges of the frame, you will notice that we essentially get back the same position of uh, the logo, but. Uh, in order to get this to match the perspective, if you look at the perspective of this van here, you can see that there are two angle lines that runs at this angle. Okay, so let me see what I can see here. It goes in this angle and then it goes in this angle like that. Alright, so you need to start to pull in the points until they converge like that, until they follow like literally the side of the van. Okay, I think I'm happy with this. Okay, so let's say I'm happy with this one. I mean, basically, we've managed to paint this logo and stuck it onto a steel frame uh, that we have done. So what we need to do right now is, okay, let me just change this into a single frame. So what we need to do right now is, we basically, we need to cut this thing out. We need to cut this frame out. And uh, then we need to attach this frame to the uh, the track that we that we've done earlier on okay so we already uh, got the movement extracted so we need to attach the cutout of this and then we're going to recomposite it back to the original video okay so i hope you understand why I mean. so i'm going to do this slowly step by step so first i need to cut this piece out first okay i need to cut this piece out so to do that i need to create uh, I need to create a polygon, a polygon, uh, polygon uh, mask. So click on polygon. Make sure nothing, nothing here is selected before you do that. Otherwise, you'll be connected to whatever that is selected. Right. So create a polygon, and then I'm going to just start drawing. Okay, with the polygon selected, I'm going to start to draw a mask over it. So try to keep it as close. To the vehicle as possible try to avoid the wheels keep a slight spacing over the wheels like so then click and drag to uh, create a much smoother curve okay undo if uh, the curve doesn't work for you and then left mouse click okay so right now i have the polygon created and how do I actually use that to cut uh, a hole? So that's where we need to have used another type of node uh, to, to convert it into a mat. All right, so we use something called a mat control. Right. So I'm going to make sure nothing is selected. I'm going to click on mat control. Okay, so this mat control right will, com will actually extract this out uh, and convert it into a mask so we want to i'll show you how to connect this first for the merge for this merge because the output of this is basically this still the output i connect it into the background all right and then for the output of this polygon okay i connect it to the garbage mat which is this gray triangle here all right so if you want to see the result okay we have to click on the mat control and then press number two and you can see that hey uh, I've actually cut this whole thing out but this is not what I want 
I want to cut the center but um, I don't want to see this but I want the, the work that I've just done so you go over to the polygon map uh, polygon tool that you just created go over to the inspector and click on invert and then now you have this piece we have created this piece with the logo added on with all the crosses uh, deleted away so what we need to do now is that we need to take the movement that we tracked earlier on attach it to this piece and then recomposite it back to the original clip okay so okay we already produced this piece so right now the map control works we need to attach the map control over to our planar tracker now go back to our planar tracker and then go over to the uh, inspector now we want to extract the transform information out from the planar tracker so let's go back to frame 65 and we're going to click on create planar transform and you will notice a new tracker node appears so this planar transform is basically just a transform node but it contains the translation motion of the extracted from the planar tracker so now we need to attach the output of this basically right, right now we are staring at this clip right now and if you scrub the timeline there's no movement no nothing but if I attach the output which is this uh, grey box here and attach it to the input which is the uh, yellow backdrop here and now if I click on this planar transform if I press number 2 and if I drag the timeline you notice that now this piece is sliding back and forth because it is moving according to the planar tracker information okay so now I'm happy I got this this motion uh, that I wanted so now I want to take this piece with the movement and I want to put it back to the original uh, van movie okay so remember the original van movie and the uh, we can uh, drag pull out another output but in this case uh, we do not need the planar tracker anymore so you can put the planar tracker aside so uh, again the shortcut is you hold down to shift key left mouse click and drag the planar tracker away and keep it aside so now we can uh, actually pull out uh, the uh, we want to put this planar transform uh, which is this one we want to put this planar transform which is moving now on top of this van movie okay so remember output okay if you drag the output of this planar transform and you put it on the output of the van movie you are, you are basically putting this layer on top of this layer okay so i'm going to grab this and then drop it onto the van movie so now i'm going to click on the brand new merge that has been created and then i'm going to press 2 and there you go you have the clip right now on top of the movie and if I were to drag from behind and then click playback and you can see we successfully gotten the logo to stick to the van and it, it runs very well okay so but we you notice something that's a bit weird as the vehicle is moving across right especially at uh, frame 90 if you look closely you can see there's a very obvious edge here there's a very obvious edge I don't know whether you can see it on your screen but I can see a very obvious edge here so we need to fix this okay and uh, we can do that by going to the polygon click on the polygon tool the original polygon that we've drawn the edge and we're going to create something called a, uh, a blend we want to create another outer edge that we can blend the original clip to the uh, to the side of the van so to do that make sure you select the polygon and right on top of the polygon to there is this thing called make double poly make double poly go ahead and click on it and you notice that the poly lines start to change a little bit uh, basically now we have two lines we can uh, create a fade that means a transition between this clip to the back okay so we first need to select that transition first now to select this one is a bit tricky you have to right mouse click on it go to control and go to select and then you want to select outer 
polygon. Now watch what happens to the lines after I click on this. You can see that it now changes into this yellow and green dotted lines. Because right now they are essentially two lines stacked on top. And now you can just drag this, basically drag it out to, so that we can do a fade transition. Fading, that means we are fading the edges, almost like blurring the edges. So remember, you can, let me just zoom in so they can see. This is the inner and this is the outer. Okay, so right now the outer is factored. I can drag the outer clip. Okay, you can click and select the outer clip. Just make it a little bit easier to select. Okay, I'll drag the inner clip here. Okay, let me undo that. Control Z. Okay, so when you have these two gaps, right, you will create a much smoother transition. Okay, I think this one can move in a bit more. This one can be deleted. Okay, you need to do this a few times, right, so that uh, it will be easier to, to know which one you're actually selecting. Okay, I have some uh, graphical area right now. Okay, so right now we're just going to stop here because only the edge is much more obvious around there. We've got some uh, graphical display errors over there. Let me try to undo. So before that, think, okay. So now you can see at frame 90, the edges aren't so obvious right now. Okay, the another problem that you will see is that as the van speeds by, right, everything starts to blur. But the logo is still crystal sharp, right? It's very sharp. So we need to apply a, uh, a shutter, a motion blur to it. So where do we apply the motion blur? The motion blur can be applied at the planar transform because that's where the uh, this node is adding the movement. So go to the planar transform, go over to the second tab, and then apply a uh, motion blur. You can see the motion blur straight away appears on the frame. Uh, you want to increase the quality to 5, and then uh, shutter angle to 130. Okay, so this will simulate the film uh, shutter uh, of the camera. So now you can see we got a nice motion blur. And then uh, basically we are done. So now we can hit playback to let it render the clip. So you can see the whole node is working, is processing everything uh, through the entire node tree. So for progression students who have used Nuke before, this is not too different from uh, Nuke. Okay, the the concept is exactly the same. So now you can see the entire uh, clip is working. So if I go over to the edit clip, and you can see that now the effect is being added, and you can play back and review the effect. Okay, so it's still rendering, that's why it's a little bit slow. Okay, so um, I know this is a lot of stats, and if you're doing this for the first time, right, it can be very, very daunting. But I'm sure if you follow uh, my steps slowly, right, you can actually figure this out very easily. Now, the next next thing that uh, if you can, this one is just to practice on your own, okay, is to remove the eye movement of this actor. All right, this one I'm not going to demonstrate. I'm going to let you guys try it out. Okay, so you have to go and try this out by yourself. So when you come over to this, let me just uh, go over to uh, excuse me the uh, fusion and explain what you should do with this shot. Okay, in this shot, right, the, the actor is supposed to be dead, all right, but uh, his eyes are moving very rapidly. Okay, so if you have done the 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 sign replacement uh, exercise. Then doing this shouldn't be too difficult. 
So your job is basically identify a frame right, where uh, his eyes and the features are nicely lit. Then after that, right, uh, clone that, duplicate that, and then use that to cover. Use the uh, use the planar tracker to track the movement of the the this area. Then clone a single uh, portion out of his head and then replace it to cover over his moving eyes. Okay, so if you are able to do the first exercise, then doing this one should be quite uh, simple. All right. Okay, so that is your exercise for uh, for today. So I hope that you guys are, will be able to follow this. And uh, if again, if you're not too sure, please go and follow uh, the video. Uh, the video is still being recorded and I will be uploading this onto my YouTube channel and then you guys can try to follow this, uh, follow along, right? Now the first exercise that, did, uh, that you'll be doing, right, I think that one uh, will, not, uh, will not be a big challenge, but the uh, van sign replacement one, I think this one is going to be quite challenging. So that's why you all have to you have to do this at least two or three times. Okay, just get into the habit of doing this whole step. Uh, don't just do it once and then after that you totally forget. You try to do it at least two or three times okay, before you attempt to do the practice exercise. Okay, but trust me, uh, you will learn a lot by going through this uh, this exercise. Okay. So any questions from you? I'm going to stop the, re the recording of the video now.